of my life has kind of led me and prepared me for this one defining moment. I'm the national president of SAG-AFTRA, for those of you that don't know. Our, uh, we actually have um, the executive director of the New York Local, which is the second largest um, lo you know, local in, in America, Rebecca Damon. And uh, I'm, I feel like I have been in a leadership position for decades now, uh, not only as an executive producer and uh, writer and director, but also uh, as a president uh, and founder of Cancer Schmancer. I successfully helped get a bill passed in Washington, D.C., which was the Gynecologic Cancer Education and Awareness Act, the first of its kind in U.S. history. And that was by unanimous consent, which means all 100 senators said yes, Fran. And uh, I was written up twice in the congressional record and then offered the vetted position of public diplomacy envoy for the U.S. State Department for family health issues. And uh, with that title, I was sent to our allied nations and military bases all over the world. So, you know, we have legislation uh, in Washington that has been knocking around for literally decades. And I am uh, feel very optimistic that now that I'm uh, at the helm, and uh, going to Washington often and reconnecting with um, a lot of my old pals on Capitol Hill, uh, we're gonna get these bills passed before my tenure is up. So I feel very fortunate about that. And the union needed somebody that was more or less nonpartisan, which I come into it uh, as such. And so I feel like I represent everybody without any preconceived notions. I didn't know who anyone was. I didn't know what anybody's feelings were about any particular issue. And it turns out that I agree with uh, different people from different parties within the union, which makes everybody feel at ease that there's somebody at the helm that will hear them, that uh, they no longer feel marginalized or dismissed. So I feel very optimistic because a union that's not unified um, is problematic. And uh, we really are one family that has one opposition, and that's our employer at the negotiating table. And that's the only time that they are too. So uh, I, I'm excited uh, to be in the position of SAG after national president. And uh, we're, <laughs> thank you. We're starting Green Council, which is uh, the first uh, um, kind of amalgam of the entire entertainment industry to commit to becoming eco-responsible entertainment because we are the largest, um, the largest influencers on the planet and uh, we have a responsibility to that planet to make eco-responsible living normalized. And right now, the industry is not really doing that. Uh, there's a lot on camera that normalizes, um, you know, living irresponsibly and not um, in concert with the natural world. And that has to pivot. And we're gonna do that during my presidency too. <laughs> Fashion designer extraordinaire. <laughs> Thank you. Um, fashion is one of the is the second biggest uh, cause of waste in, in on the planet. By yes, the way. yes. I'm doing something. I'm recycling. So we'll talk about that. But the nanny's always been a family show. Now it's still available all over the world. Do you find two? This is two questions in one. Do you find that you're getting a whole new audience of children? because the nanny is still built. And, and what does Cancer Schmancer do for children's cancers? How is that related? Well, um, let me just uh, say that um, 
What was the first question? <laughs> <laughs> the whole new audience. You have a whole. Oh new yes, new yes. Kids. Well, you know, I think that timing is everything, as they say in life. And the children that grew up watching the nanny with their parents, who would be considered probably um, uh, like uh, Z Gen to millennials. Uh, are now beginning to have their own children. So they're watching the nanny now. So the nanny basically is the gift that keeps on giving. It's now on, on Cozy TV, but it's also on HBO Max. And so it's just more popular now than it's ever been, I'm very grateful to say. And Peter and I are writing the book for the Broadway musical, The Nanny, which we're very excited about. And Rachel Bloom, who, uh, from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, is writing the lyrics. And she, um, who, uh, you know, grew up watching The Nanny, she's one of those millennials that now is watching it again with her toddler. And so it's, uh, it's a lovely thing. I think we really lucked out. We hit the bullseye and it became classic television. So it's um, enduring and has withstood the test of time. And I could not be more grateful because the nanny affords me the opportunity to speak on the issues that I'm passionate about. And uh, so, you know, I leverage my celebrity that I've been blessed with because of the nanny uh, to, for the greater good. And uh, may it continue for many, many years to come so I can keep on helping people help themselves. I just saw myself in a bikini and I'm like in shock. <laughs> oh my God, what 30 years will do. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, and you were asking about what we do for children. Well, we don't specific, we have a junior league through Cancer Schmancer, which engages uh, tweens and teens, and maybe kids even younger than tweens, um, called, uh, oh, you know, We The, what is it called? <laughs> what? What's it called? We, we the future. We the future. Yeah. WTF. Yeah. WTF. Right. <laughs> I knew it was a clever title, but I didn't think of it. Sorry. So WTF, which is um, you know, we the future, and uh, we did a wonderful video starring um, Jamie Foxx, and that's gone into public schools uh, and uh, middle schools and and high schools, and uh, we're very proud of it because it's. Uh, giving kids the power to teach their parents to live more toxic free lives. Uh, well, we don't really f actually uh, get into the research because what we're trying to do in the health space, no one else is doing. There are a lot of big organizations that are looking for the next big chemo. We're trying to stop cancer before it happens by identifying causation we're not reductionist. We're not, you know, if, if, if you had an apple tree that was yielding rotten apples, you know, are you gonna try and cure each apple or are you gonna get to the root of the problem? Get to the roots of the apple tree to find out why it's sick, why it's yielding rotten apples. Well, that's the same thing. If you have any kind of cancer or any kind of chronic illness, any kind of disease, if you're not looking at causation and you're just trying to fix the end symptom, that is like putting water on a fire from one side while you continue to throw kerosene on it from the other. At the end of the day, nothing changes. So this whole nation is very reductionist in the way it deals with our health. And we, as medical consumers, have to stop that, change that, and start asking why. Because if we don't, you know, no one will. There's a huge amount of money in sick care and not a whole lot in understanding that food is medicine and living preventatively in the long run is far cheaper for Americans to not get sick in the first place is the way to go, without question. Hi. Um, in the book, 
that's obviously F is for food, and it's a huge part, I think, of Brand Vine's experience. I was wondering if what sort of positive change you would tell Brand Vine to make in her diet in order to keep her as a brand on the shelf. Yes, I, you know, if we ever do a reboot, everybody's going to be organic. <laughs> the whole house from top to bottom, Niles is going to have to get with the program. And, uh, you know, Fran will really uh, carry the torch on that. Because, our, you know, we have really screwed up our, uh, the food in this nation with industrial farming. And if I were president, on, in you know the White House, um, I would immediately convert the farm bill to supporting farmers to convert to regenerative farming because that is the future of farming and that's working in harmony with the natural world and it's much more effective than using chemicals um, and uh, and much better for our health, much better for the soil, much better for the water bed underneath the top layer of soil, uh, much better for the uh, wildlife, including insects and birds, you name it. We just have to uh, stop enabling the people that don't care about anything but the almighty dollar. But profit, it you know, profit at the expense of all things of true value, our health, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the soil that we grow things from. That's just a sociopath. So we, but we're enabling them by not reading labels and by buying things that, um, you know, you can't eat an animal that's living a Dickensian life and stuffed with growth hormones and antibiotics and eating food that's not natural to them. and living an enslaved, miserable life from birth to death. Can't do it. It's not good for you. Certainly not good for them. It's just completely wrong up and down the ladder. And I don't do it. And the chef girls wouldn't do it. <laughs> yes? I rewatched The Nanny during quarantine and it was a lot of fun. One thing I didn't appreciate when I was a teenager watching is the incredible guest stars you had on. Yes. Um, one of them who really stood out was Elizabeth Taylor. Um, and I was curious uh, if you could tell us a little bit about having her on the show and also whether her activism in HIV AIDS was uh, any kind of model for you. Well, you know, she was a, a very courageous woman. Um, she wielded her uh, celebrity uh, on behalf of uh, AIDS and uh, really I think was one of the very first people uh, not only to do that but um, to uh, set a trajectory for many other celebrities to um, you know step up on issues that matter so I've always been an admirer of hers when she agreed to do the nanny, it was because she was selling um, a new perfume uh, called White uh, Black Pearls. Black Pearls, right? Black Pearls? We don't know. But it was one of her products. And CVS called us and said, you know, can you write something for her? And, you know, we were happy to write something for her. I mean, we did one of the most incredible episodes that she Tell inspired. That the picture. Yes, I will. Um, so, you know, it was, not only was she on it, but Rosie O'Donnell was in that episode. And we were told that she doesn't like to be called Liz. She likes to be called Elizabeth. And so everybody had to call her Elizabeth. And then she very graciously sat on, in the set on the couch and everybody in the crew, cast and crew could stand behind her and take a picture. But then when you, if you wanted the picture, then you had to pay for the touch up <laughs> And Renee, who's here with us today said, well, how much is it? And they said, it's $350. And she really wanted it for her piano, where she has a lot of celebrity photos. So she thought for a moment and then said, okay, and 
give me whatever you're giving Liz. So. <laughs> she, she said, I'll give you 700 and give me whatever you do. <laughs> Okay. Can Anybody we, else? Can we just do one more question? Or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thank you.